Hi everyone, I'm Ian Harvey, massage therapist. This is my friend Christina. Hey. Today we're going to be talking about painful rhomboids. That pain between the shoulder blades, or even a little up higher on the upper back, that people really want you to work out. They want you to work out these knots. Well, we're going to talk about why the rhomboids may not be the issue. We're also going to, to talk about the anatomy of the rhomboids and some strategies for working with this pain that might not create that soreness the next day. If you'd like to skip ahead, you can use the time codes in the description. So the rhomboids are actually two muscles. We have rhomboid major, which is the bigger portion, and rhomboid minor, which is more superior. It's kind of tiny. Sometimes the two muscles are joined together. So we're going to talk about these as if they're one unit because they pretty much act as one unit. The rhomboids originate from C7-T1. So if you can palpate this larger spinous process that's at the base of the neck, then that is C7-T1. Rhomboids also originates from all the way down to T5. So one, two, three, four, five. So this is the, the origin of the rhomboids. And they come down, diagonally down, if you think of both sides, they look like a Christmas tree. They come diagonally down and they attach to the medial border of the scapula. This upper portion attaches right near the spine of the scapula, which you can outline with your fingers here. Come to this medial border. That's where this insertion site of the upper portion of the rhomboids is. And it goes all the way down this insertion goes all the way down to this inferior angle. So, this is the origin, this is the insertion, and if you bring those two together, that's the action of the rhomboids. It retracts the scapula, bringing the scapula closer to these spinous processes. At the same time, it also rotates the scapula downward. It changes it this way, it angles it this way. So. There's retraction and downward rotation. But that's not really the full story of rhomboids. The rhomboids are mainly a stabilizer. They keep this scapula glued to the rib cage and they act as a posture muscle. They keep the scapula at a set distance from the spine as you go through your work day, as you slouch, as you stand, as you do different activities. Now something very important to know about the rhomboids is that they are mostly covered by trapezius. So if you can't palpate lower trapezius, then you'll never quite know whether you're on rhomboids or whether you're working through trapezius. You'll never know if that lump you're feeling is part of trapezius or if it's part of rhomboids. If you feel a lot of knots down here, you may be mistaking this inferior lateral border of trapezius for something that it's not. So let's find this lower border of trapezius. So to find lower trapezius, we're going to be starting from about T12, don't worry about the exact location of T12, and we're going to be coming up toward this spine of the scapula. It's the lower edge of a kite, so it's shaped like this. So bring your fingers in about that direction, coming from this spine of the scapula down, and strum toward the spine, superiorly and medially and you'll st strum across some bands of tissue that are going in this direction. If those bands of tissue are going in this direction, they can't be rhomboids. They have to be trapezius, which is superficial to rhomboids. So I'm plucking up that inferior lateral border of trapezius right now. So look how little real estate there is to work just on rhomboids. Pretty much right here. And I'm not going to get a lot of work done if I just concentrate on that point. So realize how relatively unavailable rhomboids is for direct work. Any work you do on it will have to be through trapezius and you'll have to know whether you're palpating trapezius fibers or rhomboid fibers. Or you could just not uh, worry about it so much. I don't do a lot of specific work on rhomboids. I don't do a lot of trigger point work up in this region. I don't work toward these spinous processes, although that can be good work, that can feel nice, but it can be easily overdone. 
I don't work on this medial border too much. I don't specifically try to friction it or anything like that because rhomboids are the victim in this scenario. They're getting yanked on all day by our rounded shoulder postures that we tend to develop in the workplace and in school. And they're being kept long while having to be strong. They're keeping our shoulders in place while they're being lengthened. And that can cause spasm and that can cause pain. So instead of attacking these rhomboids, which are already stressed out, I'm going to try to reduce some of the things tugging on those rhomboids. Now that's not to say that I'm going to ignore the rhomboids because they are uh, irritated, they are upset. So it can feel good to do some nice steamrolling moves over the rhomboids and over that trapezius. You can be specific, but definitely start broad, start slow, and think soothing. We want to soothe these irritated tissues. We can do some specific work following this inferolateral trapezius. All of the knots and trigger points that you're likely to find in this region, if you find that inferolateral border, I'm betting that they will track with it. They'll follow that trapezius. Trapezius may be more ticked off than rhomboids. And you may find some in this belly right here, which could be trapezius or rhomboids. And you can work directly with those. All I ask is that you, at least for your first few sessions, limit that work. Now you may be saying, well, when I work in this area, they get relief. Yes, it does help to desensitize these rhomboids by doing this deeper work. But by doing work that might be sensitizing, that might be causing further nervous system irritation, you can, over time, create more sensitivity in this area. You might be doing the opposite of what you mean to do. So, instead of trying to work out knots or do any digging, after all this nice steamrolling, we can start working on everything that's pulling against rhomboids and trapezius. Namely, the rotator cuff, serratus anterior, and the pecs. So for rotator cuff, I like to do a nice steamrolling move down this scapula. If you'd like to see more rotator cuff work, you can click that little bubble in the corner there. That'll take you to my rotator cuff video. If all four of these rotator cuff muscles are working hard at the same time, if they're all hypertonic, they're going to be keeping this humerus glued to this scapula. They're going to be yanking this head of the humerus into this glenoid fossa, which is also going to be yanking this scapula outward. So if you can soothe and calm these rotator cuff muscles, then the scapula will be able to travel inward just a bit. It'll be able to retract without rhomboids and mid and lower trapezius having to pull so hard. The same thing with this serratus anterior. Serratus anterior comes from the same insertion site as rhomboids, but it pulls in the opposite direction. It attaches to these ribs over here. So if we work on these rib attachments, that can cause serratus anterior to lose some of its tone. And again, rhomboids doesn't need to pull so hard. So for me, that looks kind of like this. I'll start in this lower thoracic region. I'm here on this lateral portion. I've got my elbow tucked into my side, so this power is coming from my hips and from my stance. And then as I deepen this lunge or shuffle my feet that way, I'm able to, to create some nice compressive traction of all of this fascia on the lateral thoracic region northward up superiorly. So I'm steamrolling all of these attachment sites of serratus anterior while giving it a bit of a stretch. This also works into the teres muscles. And finally, finish with some nice work on the pecs. I'll have a more complete video on the pecs sometime in the future. Just spread them 
give them some nice fascial traction as you move this arm and just think opening up think warming this anterior tissue and working with it in such a way that it will allow their arms to more easily rotate externally all right guys let me know what you think leave me some comments consider subscribing and i'll see you next time